What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. Let me just say, Barb got us together. Always. She always do what she needs to do. Their hair is laid. Shout out to Barb at Super Barb on S- that's S-U-P-A yeah. Barb on Instagram. And I think it's the Super, the Barb, Super Barb on, on Twitter. Twitter. So, yeah, that's our hairstylist. So, hit her up if you in Atlanta and you need your hair done because she be slaying Barb, the fuck out the girls. Barbie reading. And also, my hair is always um, Emerald Goddess Hair. Shout out to uh, Emerald Goddess Hair Company always sending me some thick, beautiful bundles. This is the same red hair I had in a while back and mm-hmm. these bundles still are fresh. I love this hair. Like, it lasts so long. But anyways, let me, let me say this real quick. <laughs> Barb is so funny because every time I go to her, like, I hate dealing with my hair. If you know me, I'm very not... I don't know how to curl. I don't know how to lay an edge. I don't know how to do none of that shit. So, every time I go to bar, I'm like, my hair don't be brushy. Be like, Lex, you didn't brush your hair. Like, Could you be cutting up? But you know what's so crazy? You know, like, all the white celebrities have been coming out that they haven't been bathing. Like, that's the thing now. If you're a white celebrity, you got to do an interview right now and let us know if you're bathing or not. Do you think white celebrities watch this show? Uh, No. Like, exactly. so Jake I- Gyllenhaal is not tuned in because I'm about to talk shit about him. Jake Gyllenhaal is not fucking watching Poor Minds, bitch. Like he was in a fucking he was in fucking Brokeback Mountain, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, anyways, Jake Gyllenhaal said that he don't be bathing, he don't be watching that pussy, and I was just very fucking offended because he was fine. He was like one of the white boys that we gave a pass to hit the pussy. You, he was. you mean you gave a pass True. to hit the pussy because he was never in okay. the league in the running. What's that man name? What's pussy? the other man name? Magic other man. Mike Man? The only white man. Channing Tatum. Now, if Channing Tatum come out and say he don't watch the pussy, I'm going to be very upset. I like George Clooney. Yeah, George Clooney. That's another one. Shout out to Casamigos. Now, bitch. Bet that's something y'all ain't know. You know who don't wash they ass? Who said that she doesn't bathe every day? Coco. Ice tea wife. That's not surprising. You got too much ass for that, Coco. When your ass is a certain... If you get a BBL, you supposed to wash your ass every day. You supposed to wash your ass every day anyway. But if you get your ass surgically enhanced as we have, bitch, you need to wash that shit every day. Huh. That shit needs to be washed. Why would you get your ass to I'm be bigger? Sorry, I don't know why it's just not surprising to me that any... One of them, not one of them kind. The any one of them would say that they don't bathe every day. It's not surprising to me. But you know what's even crazier? Okay, so the rock, y'all know. I, I hope love, we don't regret saying this one day. But like, I really. I mean, no. But way. this is what information that they've released. Like yeah. she said, she doesn't bathe unless she feels dirty. But bathing every day, she's like, if I feel dirty on Monday and Tuesday, I'll bathe Monday and Tuesday. But if I don't feel dirty on Wednesday, I'm not gonna take a bath. Mm-hmm. To me, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm bathing every day. Every it's day. just a part of my routine. Yeah. So. The Rock said something. He said, um, I wake up, I take a shower. I go work out. After my workout, I take another shower. After that shower, I usually go to work. After I work, I get home and I take another shower. So he says he takes about three showers a day. With his schedule, that's understandable. Do you know that all these white people were um, retweeting him talking about this is weird. This is In excessive. An they were so mad that he was taking three showers a day, but I feel like <laughs> they were like, you three work- showers? After you work out? What? And see, that's absolutely when you gotta take a shower because you be funky as hell. That's what I'm saying, but my Bring thing is... Bring it sweaty because I love it when, when it's, it's funky. funky. For real. For real. I'll say this though. I feel like Three showers a day, yes, that is a lot. But he's a very active person. If I wake up, yeah, I'm going to go take... Now, I'm not going to lie. To take a shower, to go work out, I'm probably not going to do that. Well, that's different. And honestly, like, I'll say this. Like, you know, I've been working out a lot lately. I don't wash my face before I go work out. Like, when I wake up in the morning... Yeah, because I know I'm about to sweat. So, I wash my face when I come back from working out. Because I I just feel like it's kind of... 
pointly. Well, I'll say this, bit. but he has children. Well, he has a child, and he probably does things in his household. So he's probably waking up, taking a shower to wake up, then going, you know, maybe cook breakfast or spend time with his daughter before he goes out for the day. So I can understand maybe him waking up and taking a shower first because he's going to be, you know, doing things and around people. So people's schedules be different, but it's never weird. Like, you can't take... Well, you can take too many showers. Mm. We we talked about that. No, y'all gonna see. Well, enough about but, the funky talk. Yeah. <laughs> enough about funky town. Okay. I want you to take me to yeah. funky town. <laughs> enough about funky town. Okay. So, how have your week been? What you been having going on? You know what? This past week, I actually went to Phoenix, um, Phoenix, Arizona. That was my second time visiting. Mm-hmm. Um. I was with my friends from high school. As you know, they are very white. Um, my friend, my very close friend, Taylor, is getting married. So it was just like a link up. All my friends went. Um, we got a beautiful, beautiful Airbnb right in front of the mountains. Um, we had a good time. It was crazy because everybody was like hitting me up like, are you safe? Right. Are they going to... Because y'all know, all jokes aside, not being funny, but there was like a case that happened in Georgia Mm -hmm. where a black lady was hanging out with her white friends and the next morning she was found dead. And all the all the white people were acting like they didn't know what happened. They were trying to say she got drunk and she fell, but everybody was like suspecting foul play. So every time I hang out with my white friends, people would be like, you need to be careful. But it's like... You do. I mean, but it's a little different. Like, I grew up with these girls. It ain't like that at all. Like, it's very much a good time. Everybody was bathing. (laughs) It wasn't like... It wasn't... It was It was fun. In the lake or in the shower? (laughs) Now, see? No. It was a fun time. Like, my friend... It's so weird because my friends aren't like that. When I hear all these horror stories about, like, white people, my friends aren't like that. Mm. (laughs) But I will say this now. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Y'all know I keep it real. The cl- white clubs are so fucking different, bro. Like, we go to the white club, and mind you, like, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bougie now. I feel like I've changed a little bit. I'm not the girl from Orange anymore. I like a little nicer things. Like, when I go to the club, I want a section. I want bottles. I want hookah. Like, I want to be treated like I'm the VIP in this bitch. So, white clubs, they had the sections in there, but it wasn't like... It was kind of like first come, first serve. Just come mm-hmm. and sit down. So, I was already kind of like, mm, okay, that's cool. But the fucking music. Let's talk about the music. I don't want to disrespect any of the artists I'm about to name right now. But there's no... No reason you should be listening to number one by Nelly in 2021. I am number one. And when they put that shit on, eh, everybody, eh, eh, everybody eh, looked at eh, me eh. like, yeah, Tiara, I am number one. Yeah. Yeah. What does it take to be? <laughs> so listen. <laughs> so, <here. laughs> so wait, it, it gets worse. It gets fucking worse, bitch. So the whole time, this other girl that's with us, she's like, oh, don't worry. My friend coming. He about to be on the ones and twos and he good. Like he going to have this bitch lit. So I'm like, uh, uh, bet. I'm going to hold it out. Mind you, they playing fucking, they playing everything like, like you just don't want to hear in a the club. They playing like fucking, what? uh, I'm sorry. This and is a classic. It's all in my head. They was playing to the window, to the wall. Mind you, that's a that's bop. That's a bop, though. But no, that's something that you play at the end of the night. Not when you're trying to get turned up. Like, nigga, I'm trying to hear ESTG. Nigga, I'm trying to hear Lil Baby. Nigga, I'm trying to hear 42 Doug Big Booty Head. Like, I'm trying to hear some real fucking hits. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that nigga ain't got a big booty? No. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, so her friend gets on the ones and twos, right? So I'm sitting there like, yes, her friend. Like, I get my shot. I'm drinking. Oh, oh. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting ready. Guess what that nigga play? Wait. YMCA. You're not too cool. You're not too cool to do the YMCA. I said, yes, the fuck I am. Yes, the- I know that is. That nigga said, da, 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 I said, that sound like the uh, Price is Right music. Da, Listen. Da, 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 da. And you know what's so funny? <laughs> there was a few black people there. But the black people that were there, they could tell I wasn't from there. Because you know the Don was Louis down. You know, I had my Louis on. So they, I was... Gra- Listen, Dre, I swear I was grabbing my purse like this. Oh, I was clutching brother. it because they was getting too rowdy. I didn't want no coke, no meth, no ecstasy Fit on my all. purse. 
none of that shit. So I was like this. The black people walking around were like, <laughs> they were like laughing at me. They were like, it's okay. It doesn't get better. It doesn't. Like, they were just like, it's okay, girl. They were like, look. They were like literally laughing because I, you could tell I was sticking out like a sore thumb, bitch. Like, I don't like that. I'm and glad I was The club know. was terrible. I'm not going to lie. The club was terrible, but uh, my little friend was out there. So I left and I went home and I changed. And I met up with him. And he got me a little gift, too. So I was like, you know, let me go meet up with him and get my love. You better get your gifts, fool. Yeah, but I I mean, I, I ended up going to the black club. As soon as I walked in, bitch, they was playing Young Thug. I was like, I smelt the peach mint hookah. We had a section. I said, I'm home. She at home now. No, oh, I felt so much better. It was like, you know how when your gas low and you just need that little energy? It's like, as soon as I hit that hook, I said, ooh, I'm back, nigga. Yeah. That's how the black clubs be. Oh, it felt so. I felt, you know what's crazy? Because I used to feel more comfortable Ski. with a bunch of... Yes, we was... <laughs> Uh, I was so happy. I was like, like three promoters. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? Because growing up, I used to feel more comfortable around a lot of white people, you know? But like, around my friends, I'm good. But in the club, I was really like... Nah, you ain't gonna never feel more comfortable than. But when I went to the black you gonna club, you feel around your people. Yes, I was that's why just, it's crazy to me that you used to feel more comfortable did, around because them that's, because that's all I knew. When you don't know any better, and that's all you've been around. I mean, you knew black. You no, black. I didn't. Your but, mama black. Yes, your sister black. I was around them. I don't have a big family, so I would never be at family reunions around a whole bunch of... I was not around a whole bunch of black people until I moved to Houston. Mm. So, of course, when I'm going to family reunions, I'm with my white friends. I'm around them all the time. But, like I said, I had an amazing time. Everything... Now, one thing I will say about white girls, like, they gonna plan the shit out. Everything was super planned out we had so much fun one day they had like a um we had like a drinking olympics so you had to go through like different things like you had to chug a beer then you had to go and do like flip cup then you had to run take a shot of fireball then you had to run and do like the cornhole then you had to jump in the pool it was a whole but i'm not gonna lie that shit was fun <laughs> it was fun it was fun, Dre. That don't uh, sound like a good time to me. It was fun, and I'm not gonna lie. That you sound know, like too much extracurricular activity, bitch. But you know, hell like, nah. Who the fuck trying to do all that? Drop through a fucking corn, bitch. What is a cornhole? The cornhole game where you throw the bitch, bean bag. What is a cornhole? You got to throw the bean bag and get it in the hole. They have a hole. What is? Limit. Why is it called a cornhole? I don't know, bro. Do you know why it's called fucking tennis? No, I don't know. Because it's a tennis ball. Well, why does it call a tennis ball? Exactly. You just play the fucking game, bitch. All I'm saying is that I killed that shit. I got everything on the first try. You know how to play cornhole. Yes, and I'm fucking good at it. And I'm going to the Olympics. <laughs> I really feel like I can do the Olympics in cornhole. I discovered a talent that Is that, that I in had. the Olympics? Yes, it is. I don't know. I lied. <laughs> but it's on ESPN. I want to compete in the cornhole. I feel like I can do it. I'm not kidding. Taking up cornhole. Didn't know I was good at it. So, sometimes, hanging out with white people is beneficial. <laughs> you can find things that you're good at that you never knew. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie, though. You're not going to be in the Olympics playing cornhole. You're a, you a so, hate ass hole. At the end when of I the get my gold medal, not thanking you. You don't got to thank me. Why would you not believe in me? Because I just don't believe. Have you seen me play cornhole? I don't, bitch, I don't even know if I did. I don't know. <laughs> I may, Maybe I have seen you play cornhole. That shows you how much I know about cornhole. You know what? I'm I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So, yeah. But let me say this. On the way to the studio today, I was realizing I was still in white girl mode. Because I was listening to my EDM music. I was like, <laughs> And I was like, I was like dancing in the car, and I look over this guy's like looking at me. I was like, oh, I had to turn up ESCG. Don't get it twisted. Forever rolling. <laughs> I had to turn it real quick because I had my win. You know, I had my little windows cracked. It was when I turned my car mm -hmm. on. Really, he was like looking like. I was like, calm down, calm down. Relax, brother. Relax, brother. But no, I had a great time you with did. my friends. Yeah, uh, my friend's getting married in October. So 
I'm excited. I had a good time. I, honestly, it was just, it's good linking up with your friends from high school. I feel like everybody's lives are so different. And I will say, hanging out, a lot of them are married with kids already. And they just, it makes me feel good because they're all so proud of me. And they let me know, like, you're doing right. Like, wait to get married. Wait to have kids. Like, you're living the good life. Like, this shit is hard over here. Like, I they let me know. friends so from high school all the time. And, like... They be letting me know, like, girl, you but good. But we still kind of living a similar life, so it's a little different, yeah, you no, know? Yeah, all my friends are... Li- well, I'll say my, my best friend that I grew... Like, that was, like, my best friend, my friend Lindsay. She's kind of doing the same thing. Like, she's still single, no kids. She doesn't want kids. So, me and her are still kind of the same. But, like, all my other friends are married. Um, I have a few friends that are divorced. They have kids. Like, yeah. So. I'm divorced. Girl, it's hard out here. Well, child, you had an eventful week. I did. So, what, what about you, sis? What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Drea Nicole. Now, y'all know I used to have $3. But now you got $22. You know what I'm saying? And why? Let them because know. of PDS debt. I got out of debt. Let me tell y'all. No, what twenty eight dollars. Uh, you know they took all everything I had. My uh, uh my loans, my my car loans, the credit card, everything I was doing. I had consolidated it, all it. They consolidated that shit, rolled it all up, mm-hmm. and let me make monthly payments with zero percent interest. Yes, with interest free payments. Yes. So if y'all, let me tell y'all something. It's it has so been easy. a life changer, Literally, a game changer for us. My credit score done went up. Mm-hmm. My skin started glowing. I said, "What is this?" Because you're not stressed out no more. I'm not out. So, you know, we love to put y'all on game. So, if you are in debt and you need some help with that, all you have to do is go to pdsdebt.com backslash poor minds. That's pdsdebt.com backslash poor minds and take back your financial freedom today. Yes, they're going to do a quick assessment and you can get started immediately. And the good thing is, if you get approved, you get a $25 Visa gift card. Go ahead and do this shit. I'm going to do it again. Do it like it's your be day. Baby. And you know. (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk about your week. My week was great. You don't have anything you want to share with the class? I got a nice gift this week. I got a good little gift. What was it? It was a car. No, nothing too crazy. <laughs> nothing too crazy? Bitch, you got a brand new motherfucking Range Rover, bitch. Nice as fuck. It must be the life of a bad bitch. This is why y'all want to talk about us all day, but the girls... <laughs> not the girls. The girls getting her things. Because I'm definitely still driving that old ass car. <laughs> <laughs> and my my other car has to actually be parked at Lex's house because they wouldn't let me have two parking spots in my building. So mm. my other car is at your house it right is. now. So I got I mean I, I got two cars. <laughs> she got two cars right now, you know. You know what I'm but yeah, I got a new car uh last week. It's nice as fuck. I'm not gonna lie. So let me tell y'all another story. Oh my god. So we went to this little uh like opening of a restaurant, a little tasting or whatever. So that was the day Dre was like, okay, well I'm gonna bring my old car to your house Mm -hmm. and you know so you can park it over there but I was like I'll just drive it over there she was like no something going wrong with my car so just follow me in the range (laughs) baby I sat in that motherfucker I connected my bluetooth I was driving slow to the beach it drives so smooth cause you know me and Dre live literally like two miles from each other so I was driving so slow I was taking them I was taking that corner niggas was looking at me I said yeah you see it you see it so if y'all see me in a Range Rover, mind y'all business. It's mine. Yeah, it's fucking mine. You know, it was definitely. I was kind of shocked a little bit. You were only because I didn't really think that, that he it was, was gonna. gonna yeah. I didn't think he was really gonna get it. Yeah. So I was shocked because I'm like, this nigga not about to really buy me a car. I knew, he, I knew it was gonna happen. It was just like, hurry the fuck up and do it. That's how you feel. Yes, I was. I like, didn't know. See, and I think you and Lynn both felt like he gonna do it. I feel like, like if I a didn't nigga, feel like that nigga was gonna do it. I felt like he was cab. I felt like he was fronting. Cause I'm just like, what nigga is really about to buy you a sixty thousand, seventy thousand dollar car? Right. Paid off. You know what I mean? But like I, I like, just I wasn't expecting. But I feel it. like, like you said, like 
we always talk about it. If a nigga got it and he fuck with you, it's like, why not? Because sometimes... But let's be real. Well, we maybe we should talk about that on Patreon. But what? the circumstances of the situation, I really did not think he was going to buy it. Yeah, we'll talk about that on Patreon. Okay. We're not going to get to it. Yeah, we're not going to get to it. But like I said, I always feel like... Some people just really feel like money comes and goes. So if, uh, if somebody fuck with you, whether it be something that's $10, $10,000, or $10 million, they feel like, fuck it, let me... Let me, Some people do feel that yeah. way about money. And I guess that goes to show you, like, even though we making money now, we still ain't got that much money. Because I still be, like, holding on to my coins. I got to hold on to my receipts. Shout out to Lil Wayne. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I feel like, you know. Because I need... To- Mm-mm. I gotta hold on to my coins. I just ain't about to. I don't know, sis. I'm not gonna lie. I'm Once a- me and you get to that point, though, we do always say like we'll buy each other like cars and but shit. Honestly, but we're not at that point yet. I mean, yeah, but like I feel like I'm a spender because I know I'm gonna make it right you back. I don't. Be a big I don't spend outside my means, but I don't mind dropping something on somebody that I'll if I want to well I'll say this I'm the same way but let's be real bro you ain't out here spending that kind of money on yeah, nobody because I don't have that kind of money but when if I do would I buy you a car yeah yeah like if I but had it's it it's different because me and you have a I don't know we're friends yeah. like we're best friends but I'm not gonna lie if it's a nigga that I'm fucking with and it's his birthday why not if you got it if I have it ain't gotta be your nigga though just the nigga you fucking with you would just buy him a Range Rover why not if I got 30 million in the bank and I've been fucking with this nigga and he cool and he need a little ride I'll get you a little ride That ain't a little ride, though. Uh, I mean, a little ride is a Mitsubishi. I'm just saying, though. A little ride is a Hyundai. I mean, I just feel like... A little ride is a Kia. But I'm saying, though, but if I'm fucking with you and, I, and I'm and i worth $30 million, buying a $60,000, $70,000 car, what is that? Even if I'm worth $30 million, I'll get you a little Kia. Oh, uh, see? Now, see? I don't want my nigga riding around no Kia. You ain't my nigga. I feel I would be definitely be if like if I gotta buy you a car if I gotta buy you <laughs> one you not my nigga well, I'm like if I'm like, buying you another car then you my nigga well I'll say this I always feel like I'm gonna be like an Oprah like I'm not gonna find somebody that's gonna be a bigger boss than me cause I, the, the, the the sky's the limit what I'm about to do like y'all I'm about to fuck you're it up boss. I'm about to fuck the game you're, up you're I'm about to be boss. I like to speak this you're shit into my boss. life y'all about to be like I'm tired of seeing this Lex babe. bitch every time I turn you're on my TV every time I turn on my phone boss. I'll see this bitch and that's how I'm gonna be so Oprah was like fuck it Stedman let's go that's how I'm gonna be fuck it let's go you know just like how Rihanna is like Rihanna. I definitely know that like cause I love Rihanna Rihanna is like my super inspiration for like what I want to do mm-hmm. as far as like you know being in one lane and then cut like moving to another lane and then really just Taking using over. that to catapult to something else right so I love Rihanna but however um I definitely feel like I'm gonna be a boss but I want a boss ass nigga if I gotta buy you another like if you already got like 10 Rolls Royces and I buy you another one cool mm-hmm. but if I gotta buy you a Kia <laughs> Or if I got a, and that's your only car, like I don't like that. I'm sorry, say, I don't want no bum like ass it. nigga. But you know, that's I what you're like saying though. It's, 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 what's it? What's it called? Because why is you buying this no, nigga listen, his only car? Let me say this. What's it called? Um, when you do something good for somebody, because somebody did something good a good for deed. You. No, it's called um reciprocity. No, like I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for. But it's the second it's week like, in a row we couldn't think of the word. It's like when you pass it along. I can't remember the name. But anyways, whenever you just like do a good deed for somebody because somebody did something good for you and you pass it on. Mm. So I feel like, you know, it was niggas that was fucking with me and did things for me and, you know, believed in me and gave me a chance. So I feel like not that I'm supporting somebody or bringing somebody up, but if I have like a nigga and he grinding and he doing well for himself and he can say He's not care doing of, well though if you got to buy him a I'm Kia. I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm not saying that I have to buy him a Kia. Like, I'm not... I was being dramatic, but I would buy a nigga a car, not his first car. I just said nothing. that too. I would absolutely buy a nigga a car. Yeah, I'll absolutely. Buy, yeah. So yeah, I'll buy a nigga a car. It ain't no big I'll deal. I'll buy you a car. You know what I'm saying? So speaking you of gifts. Get a little rolls for me. Speaking of gifts, we're going to get into these topics. Mm. We're going to call this the birthday episode. <gasps> it is your Girl, birthday. You know I don't want to ride. See more easy as you sit up on my couch. See, you I, remember the uh one Trey songs did the remix? Girl, you gonna cry tears from your eyes. 
No cause of candy, hand me them panties, girl. I'm your gift to I'll be sick of Trey. I used to be sick of Trey song. I used to, remixes. but I used to love the remixes. That was like to me, that was his era. That was like his moment. I was so mad when he remixed uh Trapped in the Closet. Trey Song, you G, you pulled it off. <laughs> I was like, Trey Song. I don't remember that, friend. He did the remix. And then R. Kelly made the character gay and he didn't release no more. <laughs> that was funny. I don't remember that. Yes. I don't remember that remix. He made a remix of Trapped in the Closet. But he did a few, like, lit-ass remixes. And he was in his bag yeah. back then. I he mean, was. yeah. We'll give it to Trey. So, anyways. Uh, What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Drea Nicole. And we want to tell y'all about Evive Smoothie. So, y'all know, if y'all follow me on social media, if y'all follow me on Instagram, Twitter, I've been talking about my little healthcare journey. Mm -hmm. um, I've been trying to be a little bit more healthy. I've been switching up my little daily routine. I've been working out. I've been eating healthy. So, I love Evive because I love to make me little protein smoothies and stuff in the morning. And this has made my life so much easier because they deliver it right to your doorstep. It's already prepackaged. It's already mixed together. And all you have to do is put, put it in a shaker mm -hmm. with your your choice of liquid mm -hmm. and the best thing about it is that it's blenderless so if you don't got your little blender at home Shake all you go. gotta do is you know put it in the bottle whatever juice that you choose just do Shake it and go. go 20 minutes so i like the orange peach uh passion mango y'all know i love me a little citrus flavor so i feel like vitamin c wakes you up in the morning so if you start with this at the beginning of your day, you're yeah. going to get it going. And it's non-GMO. It uses organic fruits and vegetables, uh, no preservatives, no artificial flavors, none of that shit. And like we said, the best thing about it of it all is that it's just already pre-made and it takes literally 20 minutes to make. So all you have to do is go to AviveNutrition.com and use the code PoorMinds20 and get you 20% off plus free shipping. Don't say we ain't ever gave y'all nothing. Period. The, this yep. is the birthday episode so we're gonna talk about all things birthday cause this is dropping it's the week the, do it like it's your b day baby do it like it's your b day baby do it like it's your b day <laughs> your destiny will be fulfilled <laughs> 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 Baby girl, I want you to go and live it up. So I will say this. This is dropping on a Friday, but my birthday was Tuesday. Hey. Uh, turned 32. I'm a grown, grown woman. Yes. So I'm a Leo. Y'all know August 17th. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to do a birthday episode. We talk about all things yes. birthday. I feel like birthdays are so, like, controversial. And cliche. Like, cliche. Big deal. Like, uh, uh, uh. So the it's first thing I birthday. want to talk about is, is the cost of your birthday present important? The actual cost. Like, if somebody gets you something, do you Google how much it is? And does that matter? Depends on who it's from. I 100% agree. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say his name because I think he watches the show. He was a character on the show that I dated. But, like, he got me. Like, every time he would buy me something, like, I would have to, like, I would Google search it and see how much it was. Because I felt like sometimes he would try to stunt like he had a lot of fucking money. And then it's like, he would get me a gift. And it would be cool. But it was like, this ain't that. Like, you trying to make like it seem. Yeah. Because it, it would be different. It was like, oh, you know what? I know you needed this, so let me buy you this. Like, if it was like like a necklace. you and I ain't never seen you with no jewelry on, so I wanted to buy you this. Just something nice that you can have on your neck. It would be more so like, I got you, girl. It's whatever. Whatever you want. Um, it's, the money's not a limit. So, bam, let me put that on your neck. Oh, money's not a limit, so why is this $200? Money's not a limit, why is this $1,000? Why it's not like, three bands? Yeah, I feel like if you talking that hot shit... You know what I'm saying? But I feel like the cost of a present doesn't matter. Like, when, when if I really, really like you, I'm really just happy that you thought of me. But I will say, if I'm really, really fucking with you, I don't expect the cost of the present to be like a thing. But don't just send me no money. If I'm fucking with you and I like you and you just send me money. You want them to actually put thought into yes, the gift. Unless it's like 20 $15,000, don't just send me some money. Seriously. You expensive. You um, know that? It's okay. I mean, I deserve and I And I get that because I'm not trying to be funny. Let's keep it real. Like, I have niggas send, that'll send me three, five $5,000 on a normal. So Baby, for my, everybody ain't able. Girl, shut the fuck up, $70,000 car pussy. 
Exactly. Drink your wine, bitch. And let me talk about and my little five bands. Let me talk about my little five bands, now. Nah. But I will say this. Um... If I'm fucking with you, yes, I do expect you to think into my gift. Because I'm not going to lie. Like, I was fucking with somebody for my birthday one year. He just, like, sent me some money. And I was thankful for it. But I'm like, unless you're sending me X amount of money so I can go get my gifts myself, that's different. Okay. And we talked about it. But don't just be like, oh, happy birthday, baby. 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 <laughs> <laughs> can we please name this episode? Baby. Do, no, it's, do, do it like, like it's my bidet. bidet. Baby. And it's got to be spelled B-I-D-E-T. Like bidet. Bidet. <laughs> and then it got to be B-A-Y-B-E-E. Baby. <laughs> yes, we can name it that. But okay. I will say like, if I'm fucking with you, I expect you to think into my gifts and send me something. Like, don't send me no fucking money, bro. Like, I think money is the most unthoughtful gift. Unthoughtful gift ever. Unthoughtful gesture that you For can your birthday. do. Only. Yeah. Because any other day, I'll take that shit. <laughs> any other day, I'll take it. But yeah, for my birthday, I would like for you to put more thought into my gift than just sending me some bread. Like, definitely buy me something. Like, because year round, if we've been talking for a minute, I done told you what I want. I done mm. told you what I like. I done retweeted. You have some insight on the things that I like. I probably don't even sent it to you. Right. I so, retweet and I post things on my story that I like all the time. So, if you fucking with me and you don't pick that up, you just really don't like me that much. Right. And then, that's a red flag. Like, I don't really need to fuck with you like that because you're not even putting thought into you're what you're trying attention. to get me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. So do you feel like birthdays are important? Yeah, I do. I don't. I do. I feel like I feel like every year that you get to be alive and you get to be on this earth is a blessing because it's so many people who, even with us being so young, like with you being 32, with me being 30, it's so many people who were in high school with us, who grew up with us, who are not still here with us. Right. So I feel like birthdays are a blessing and it should be celebrated. Now, I think people sometimes make it into a whole nother thing that it Bro, don't really need to be. That's you know what I issue. mean? I think people do the most about it and i especially hate people who do the most about it every year it's different if you feel a certain way like or you feel like oh it's my 30th birthday it's my 25th birthday yeah, it's those my 21st are my birthday birthdays. my 16th birthday whatever sweet 16 right those have even for, like 35 40 50 whatever yeah. like those type of birthdays i understand going out the extravagance of it all right right but like when it's like 23 32. Hey. I'm just saying. I'm just now saying. Now you ain't have to use my age. Well, because I'm 31. Okay, let's say hey. 31. You look like it's my B-Day. Baby. <laughs> 31, 41, 45, I mean 46, you know, whatever. I just feel like people do the most about their birthday and it's just like every year it don't need to be that. Be grateful, yeah, so because this, you're still here. Right, so this is my thing. It's just a lot I, of pressure on the people around right. you. Right, so I, I always tell y'all how much my life drastically changed when I turned 30. Literally, it was like, literally, when I turned 30, things changed. Our relationship changed. You look like such a Barbie doll today. It's the hair for me. Um, now, what was that? Because I'm doing the I kiss my B D. Licks. What? <laughs> okay, this is what we're not gonna do. Uh -huh. So anyway, so <laughs> I always talk about how when I turned thirty, my life changed drastically. Our relationship changed. Um, I had lost my job. Um, I started taking. We started taking poor minds a little seriously, like because my thirtieth birthday was when we started getting along again. Because we went to Jamaica. Did we? No, yes, I'm we I'm did. Kidding. So I'll say this, like, 30 was a big deal to me. But ever since my 30th birthday, I had started practicing, like, gratitude and being thankful for every day. So honestly, I celebrate my life every day. So to me, like, a birthday is cool. Like, I'm, I'm very blessed to be 32. Like, I'm not saying I'm not grateful. But... <sighs> Every day I wake up like, this is my life. Every day my life gets better. So for me, like on my birthday, it's like, yes, I'm here. I'm 32. I'm here with my friends, but I'm happy every day. And I celebrate my life every day. And that's how my mom raised me. So birthdays are cool, you know, but I just look at it like, oh, this is a moment where me and my friends can come together and turn up. I don't want a birthday month. I don't want a birthday weekend. I don't want a birthday week. I don't want to do all that. Let's have one, one moment even. Let's just toast. Celebrate to my birthday, but let's move on. I hate people that are like, 
I got a birthday dinner at 7 o'clock. Everybody need to show up. Everybody shows up. Maybe some people don't have money. Maybe some people do have money, whatever. And then after the birthday, well, you didn't pay for my food. Oh, you didn't pay for my drink. It's like you never know people's financial situation. I I think it's crazy how people like, oh, you tell you didn't tell me happy birthday on social media. I kill I'm talking about you. I, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning. I text Kill. I said, Happy birthday. I love you so much. We got a long paragraph. Then I told my homeboy happy birthday on Twitter. She was like, Where's my happy birthday? I had to tell her happy birthday on Instagram. I had to tell her happy birthday on Twitter. So what's the difference though? That's what I'm wondering. I'm, I'm asking I'm, you I'm though, not talking but about I'm, Killer. I'm, asking, I'm just saying I'm general. asking you because But she was just joking. Just to let y'all know. She was joking. But anyways. Go ahead. Okay, I'm asking you because you message her you text yeah, her yeah. and then you shouted out your homeboy on twitter so why didn't you just text him like what's the difference because i don't really i don't even think i have his number still right so i guess maybe in her mind she kind of felt like well you text me but like that was more public like you acknowledged him publicly but i birthday. feel like it's more intimate a uh, more like for your I birth think, but i think it goes to show like the differences in how people look at things yeah and that's why i said i'm not I was joking about killer, but I've seen other people do that before. And people have topics about that. Like, oh, you shouted, you sent me a text message, but you didn't shout me out and this and that. But it's just like, to me, I don't care what you do on social media. Like, as long as you tell me happy birthday, I don't care how you say it. But as long as you just thought of me, I just be happy. I'm just, when it comes to my birthday, I'm very, I'm a needy person and my expectations be up here. But for my birthday, hey, just send me a happy birthday. As long as you're not my nigga. This does not apply to anybody who's fucking me. Just to let y'all know. This is for my friends and other people. If you fucking me, if your dick is inserted in my vagina, no, you better be at that Louis store right the fuck now. Okay? All right, just had to make sure that's clear. But yeah, I feel like people put too much pressure on other folks for their birthday. Why am I pressured for the day you was born? Why? This is your birthday. Whatever you want, you need to do it like it's your B-Day, BB. <laughs> it ain't my B-Day, baby. Why is this pressure on me to do all, plan all this and do all this? Like, if somebody wants to plan something for your birthday, let them. But don't be mad at people because they don't go above and beyond for your birthday. Right. I just hate the 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 stigma the around pressure. It's so dumb. Because if I want to just randomly send you something or randomly show you I appreciate you or randomly tell you I appreciate you, that's a good thing. Now, I do agree, like, because we were talking about earlier about, like, I guess Killer has said, too, like, if somebody texts her HBD, HBD. <laughs> and it's somebody that's close to her, she not going to respond. Mm. I agree with that. You not going to respond? No, because I feel like if you somebody that's close to me, HBD is the type of shit that somebody that's like, if a Twitter follower say happy birthday to me, they're going to be like, HBD, Drea. Mm. But you as my friend, if you send that to me in a text, no, I'm not going to respond. What if I'm busy and I'm like doing something, I'm like, oh shit, it's Dre Well, birthday, bitch, you need HBD. to wait till you're not busy so you can send me a heartfelt message. I'm dead. But what if it's just being heartfelt? I just What if I'm not a deep person? I just thought about you, HBD, saying. No, I thought about I'm sorry. You. I'm not going to lie. I don't have them type of friends. Like, because I do that for my friends on their birthday and they do it for me. Now, you a tip for tat person, too. I'm not. When it comes to birthdays, yes, you Bro, are. no, I'm not. I'm not a tip for tat person, period. However, I do take into account certain <laughs> things. Yes, but it's not being tip for tat. It's just like, what? why do you deserve certain <laughs> shit for me if you ain't did it? <laughs> <laughs> but that's being tip for tat. It's not really, though. Yes, I feel it like it's treating like people like no, friend. I think sometimes you be having that shit wrong. It's not being tip for tat. It's just treating people accordingly. Some people deserve to be treated accordingly. Well, I'll say, but I'll to say how this, you treat me. I'm going to treat you accordingly. I, I see what you're saying, but what I'm saying is if I do something for you, it don't matter. It don't matter. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart, not because I'm maybe expecting you are, something Maybe you are, maybe you're not, because everybody don't do shit out the goodness of their heart. Some people do shit because they have motives. And they're expecting something back. So how do I know... How will I know <laughs> if he really loves me? Sorry. How will I know? I mean, How will I know? I'll say this. I'm not, uh, like, I'm a, I like to give gifts. I do. But it was, like, no, I'm saying, because this is the first year I've been able to afford to give 
people so gifts. So why you gonna say you like to give? Because up? I feel like I've always have given like sentimental gifts and like like to my sister or to like my mom. Like I'll do like thoughtful things like cards and I'll write a long message. Like even for you, like I never like not for your birthday this year because I pulled out the air mess for your birthday this year. But like for your past birthday, she gonna let y'all know every chance yeah. she needs. <laughs> But I'm saying, like, for your past birthday, like, I would just give you some flowers and get you a card and, like, write you a sweet little message in there because that's what I could afford at the time. And, you know, that was me being thoughtful and just showing you. Now I'm being me be, being thoughtful. Out. Like, bitch, I'm going to get you a nice fucking gift because I can afford it, but I know that's what you like. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I know what you like. Oh, you like that, huh? <laughs> but I'm doing that because I don't expect, I don't care what you get me for my birthday. I don't. But what I'm saying is, first of all, y'all, I don't. I know what you're gonna get. Already told me. Yeah, she already know because she already told me what she wants. I didn't have to tell you. I didn't even tell you what I want. I just said if you're gonna give me something, make sure it's Louis. (laughs) Is that not telling me what she want? But you asked. You asked. I did not. You did. You say first of all. You said let's send me what you want for your birthday. I told you that like literally last month. Literally, right after you bought me my birthday gift, you was like, yeah, because by then we going to be making yeah. more money. So, you know, you're going to have to give me a better gift. Period. But, you know, I was joking. Kind of. It was like a dinner joke. Like, we're laughing, having <laughs> drinks. Like, <laughs> Ooh. Tough <Yeah>. crowd. <laughs> but, okay. But I would just say birthdays are important. But I feel like stop putting pressure on people around you for your birthday. I think when you're satisfied within yourself and you're happy with where you're at in life, you're just happy to be around the people that you love and that you care about. I think it's silly to be making like... I agree. But at this point in your life, I will say this too, though. I agree with you, but I also feel like we at a certain age to where, bitch, if you're not getting me no gifts, you're not getting none. Wait, you talking about niggas, right? I'm talking about everybody getting none oh no gifts back oh, i wasn't talking about no pussy oh that's what i was like i don't want none of that thing yeah i wasn't talking about that so if somebody doesn't get you a gift you're not getting them a no. gift. do you consider like because we at a point where i feel like let me ask you this though so let me ask you this so we went to miami for your birthday okay do you consider that like a gift though like if somebody just showed up for your birthday that's cool so, are you going to get them a gift? I'm going to show up for their birthday. <laughs> it's the petty even for me. To me, that's an even exchange. Okay. I'm it's just asking. Exchange. But what if they don't do nothing for their birthday? If they don't do nothing? Yeah. I'll send them some flowers. Oh, girl. Flowers aren't good enough? What's no, they ooh, are. Because, I mean, you got money. So, what's oh, girl? You got money. Why can't you send them something better? Why would I not send them flowers if they didn't even come to my birthday? They did. I said they came to your birthday. Oh, they paid but for they're a not flight. doing anything. Yeah, they they paid for a flight. That's all they could afford or whatever. What if my birthday was in Atlanta and they just came to my dinner? <laughs> Since you got so many questions, riddle me that. <laughs> did they pay for your dinner? None of my friends be paying for my dinner, by the way. So, no, they did not. Baby, because you eat a lot. You like to order crab cakes. Actually, martinis. I take that back. Jordan have paid for my dinner a lot of times. Uh, Shout out to Jordan. A real man. But yeah, like none of my friends pay for my dinner at my birthday. I paid a tell. You did? I don't even remember that. Yes, every year. Damn. I'm sorry, friend. Don't be sorry. Be careful, ho. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> birthday expectations. Mine or low. I just be happy to be around the people I love, honestly. I don't expect nobody to do nothing for me. So, it's just crazy. Like, I've had some really, really good birthdays where I'd be shocked that some people, like, go all out and do this and do that for me. And I'd be like, wow, like, okay. But like I said, I'm grateful for everything. You know what I'm saying? I take account. I, I take. I try to take a, um into account people's financial situations. Yeah. However, once I know you got it, it's a different story. Oh, God. Listen, I'm letting you know right now, I ain't showing up with no Range Rover Part 2 for your birthday next year. <laughs> well, not next year, but maybe in like five. Oh, honey. Maybe for my 35th birthday, you could definitely give me a G-Wagon. Mm, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll get you one it. too, though. Your birthday four months later, I'll get you one. We'll have matching. Oh, God. But no, I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit about birthday expectations a little bit more because I had a conversation with okay. 
our hairstylist with okay. her. Uh-huh. And she was telling me how um, somebody she used to be cool with had invited her on this birthday vacation that she okay. was having. And wanted everybody to pay for their flights, you know, pay their little portion for the villa or whatever. Mm. And then on top of that, she sent them all a list of birthday gifts that she had wanted. And like all of the shit was like Louis, Gucci, Poochie. Not the Poochie and the Gucci. Poochie, Gucci, Louis, Dior, YSL, everything, bitch. All you can imagine on the fucking list. But she said that all her nigga ever bought her is Jordans. Now, see? Now, that's one thing about me. My nigga, I don't expect my friends to get me designer anything except yeah. Drake. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, I see you had to throw that in there. You thought you got to pay? Why you expect me to buy? Because I know the. I see we got the same bank account, bitch. I know what you're making. So, like I said, I don't expect none of my friends to get me designer, but Drea. But I will say, I don't expect my friends to get me the shit my nigga is getting me. Like that's out of line. Like if my nigga is buying me fucking Jordan and K Swiss. Why would you ask your friend for fucking I wear designer? My K Swiss. That is fucking I wear childish. My but that's K-Swiss. why I said people be having their priorities backwards. You have your standards up here for your friends, but your standards down here for your nigga. I'm sorry. I go above and beyond for my friends before I'm a go for a nigga. Like for Allie's birthday, when I went to Mexico a few months, y'all saw that when I went to Mexico, I spent eight hundred dollars on a flight. I had my own room. I spent because I wanted to show up for her because she deserves that. Like, but she wasn't like, oh, Lex, I, I see poor mine's doing well. Uh, I want to watch. Like, no, she was just happy for us all to be there. Like, I think that's weird when people just have their expectations like pocket this for watching. their friends. Don't pocket watch me, bitch, because you're going to get a teddy bear and a rose on your door. And that's going to be it. Yeah, I just feel like. Friends pocket watching is just weird right. a little bit. I mean, I guess I kind of feel that way, but then I do kind of get it. Not pocket watching, but like I said earlier, if I already know what's going on, yeah, bitch, I do expect you to give me a better gift. Like, if you was never the friend who got me gifts right. and then I see what's going on now, but like, like I, I do s- expect you to give me I'm a gift. A- I'm not putting a price limit on what right. I expect you to get me, but now I know you can probably Send get me something. something. Even if it's some flowers, like you said, it's the thought that count. I think that's what people be feeling to realize a lot of the time. It's the thought. It really is. I'm not going to. I would rather somebody send me something that's inexpensive than to not see me nothing. nothing i'll say this though i'm not i feel like i have my people every year that i give gifts to like my sister my mom of course jackson add a little peanut to the mix i added you to the mix this year i just i have my group of people i send gifts to other than that like i feel like because i don't want nothing from you for my birthday so happy birthday we can we can exchange happy birthdays and that be it. You know, that's just how I am. Now, I'm not saying I only give people that I expect back. It's not what it is, but it's just like, I don't expect nothing. So I guess I don't think about other people's birthdays because I don't even think about mine. But like I said, for me, it's not about the price of the gifts. Like, when it comes to my niggas, absolutely, you're going to have to give me yeah, certain shit. Yeah, when it comes shit. to my niggas, you got to come but up But when it comes to my friends, yeah, to me, it's just like, get me something. Mm. It makes me feel like you thought about me. Mm. And it, maybe it is kind of like, like you said, a little bit tip for tap because I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, if you the type of friend who you never buy me nothing for my birthday, I'm never going to buy you nothing. But if you get me something, then now I know what type of time we on. I'm going to get you shit. Because I have friends who I buy them something for their birthday every year. Yeah. And I got friends I never buy shit for. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm not buying. If you my friend, you. Cause unless it's like, it just unless a- you really like tell me like, bitch, you better show up for my birthday. You, I'm not going to get you nothing. I'm that person. You just got to tell me. You have to tell me. You do. I'm not a, like I said, like I like to give gifts. I do, but you got to remind you, do you want something or not, bitch? I can't read your mind. I'm not that kind of person. that's like, you know what? Let me surprise you and pop up. That's not me. I'm not, I ain't got a romantic bone in my goddamn body. Now, if you want something, you better let me know. Cause if you don't say nothing, I'm not going to get you nothing. I feel that. Well, I didn't know what you wanted until you told me. Yeah, that's true. Well, let's go ahead and get into the next topic. Let's sis. get let's into get the, bed. Bed. Ow. the bed. The bed. The bed. Bow, 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 bow. So, we're still going with the theme Ooh. of your birthday, right? It's your birthday, so I know you want to ride out. We're going to talk about birthday We're going to talk about birthday six, right? Because I feel like when people's birthday come around... 
everybody always want to talk about birthday sex. They yes. make they make such a big thing, yes. such a huge deal about awesome. birthday sex. And I personally feel like birthday sex is not no different from any other motherfucking mm. sex that well, you have. You so, first of all, let me just say this segment is being brought to you by the taste pills. We brought the taste pills back. Y'all have been asking us about these damn pills. And Y'all let me tell you the why. Taste pills. Let me tell you why this made my birthday. The magic potion. The shit. Now you want to talk about birthday cake, baby. My pussy you gonna be sa- tasting like birthday like cake. Like tasting like birthday cake. So we have talked about the taste pills before, y'all. So the taste pills, you basically you take them and it changes. I'm about to take one right now. Where you going tonight? I got something to do. I mm. got some plans. So it's made with natural ingredients. Um, it's an organic vitamin that works with your natural pH or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. So it makes your secretions taste, you know, fruity. Right. So you can take two capsules an hour before six. Or you can take them daily. I like to take. Damn. I like to take them once a day. So it literally. Makes I think you, you need to take it every day. I do to too. get the best results. Yeah. So they have like natural ingredients like banana, strawberry, mango, cinnamon powder, all that stuff. So y'all know how we always say if you suck a nigga dick and you taste his cum and it tastes like battery acid, you know that nigga been drinking Dr Pepper and Pepsi all day. Right. But you can tell the difference between like a nigga that like to work out and he be drinking his water and mm-hmm. eating his fruit. So this is basically all that healthy stuff packed in a pill. Yes. So it's changing the way that you taste, y'all. And everything is all natural, all organic. Right. So I'm a, we got we got the more consistent. You and y'all know the y'all want, but let me say, I'm, let me get I'm gonna get into the story about the pill. But yeah, it's it's we gonna put a um a code in the bio for y'all. So y'all gotta go to tastevitainc.com. I'm gonna take mine right now, boo boo. And it's a uh, the code is poor minds, and you get fifteen percent off. But let, anyways, let me tell y'all about these pills. So I was taking my pills every day, like two weeks. And baby, on my birthday, it was definitely like he he was eating like it was it is the last meal. I mean, I thought that nigga ain't ate no food. I, I said, well, is your they make you baby? taste really delicious. They really make you taste good, but I feel like, but also I feel like he went above and beyond because it was my birthday. Like I don't want you to fuck me like it's a regular day. I want you to do it like it's my B day. Seriously, you supposed to fuck me different on my birthday, Dre. I don't care what you say. Like birthday sex should be different. It's, That's why I said like my pussy don't taste like mango every day. Sometimes you might taste a little chipotle, like, nigga. <sighs> I, I I like a little sofritas. What you want me to do, bro? You gonna taste a little Pinot Grigio? It's not going to taste like... But I knew it was my birthday. So I was taking my pills. So I was just like... Don't say that, though. Because you got to take them... You got to keep taking them. I did. And keep taking them. In order for it to be a continuous... Yeah, you right. But I got extra prepared for my birthday. (laughs) Because it's a birthday cake. So I gave him that mango, that strawberry. So Because it's different. It's my birthday. Mm -hmm. Any other time, girl, you don't mind that Chipotle pussy? Every nigga that had a little Chipotle pussy. But if you don't want to take them every day, all you need to do is take them two hours before you have sex and it'll still t- change yeah, the taste of your vaginal it. It'll secretions. still change it. But like I said, I feel like birthday sex should be different. I definitely think that you're supposed to pull out some moves that you don't usually do. If you don't usually eat your girl pussy, you need to eat it for her birthday. If you usually don't ride his dick, you should ride it for his birthday. Like, you're supposed to do things that you usually don't do. If you know she like toys and you don't like toys, pull out the toys. It's her birthday. Give I her what know. she wants. I hate that, though. I feel like sex supposed to be good year round. It Why is do I gotta to be wait good year to get, round. Why do I gotta wait to get my pussy sucked until because my birthday? Because some niggas don't like eating pussy, bro, and that's just is what it is so a I'm lot of a lot long of, term fucking with a nigga that don't want to eat but pussy. some people are some people are in relationships with women who don't like to suck dick or men who don't like to eat pussy but i feel and like that's what i be cheating i mean yeah that's true but we're not talking about that right now <laughs> god damn it we're talking about birthday sex so on their birthday give them what they want if that man said i want somebody to eat your coochie for your birthday if you like girls if you like girls and if you're into it don't do it just because that's what he's saying Cause you gonna be mad in that whole crying, but if a man wanna eat a little coochie, let him eat a little coochie. You feel me? You gonna eat a little coochie? On no, your cause I don't like it. I mean, on his birthday, absolutely not. But I said I don't like that shit. I don't like it. So why would I do it? What didn't you like about it? It. What did it taste like? It tasted like Chipotle. <laughs> but you like Chipotle? Chipotle. I don't. I like Chipotle. I don't want to eat no Chipotle pussy. That's for you to eat, not me. 
That's your plate, not mine. Exactly. <laughs> but you like Chipotle. I don't give a damn. I'm not eating no Chipotle pussy, though. That's for you to eat. <laughs> That's your plate. <laughs> it ain't mine. You feel what I'm Worry saying? Worry about what's on your plate. Worry about what's on your plate. Everybody's talking about, you can't eat if you're watching another nigga plate. Exactly. And I, th- I thought that's what y'all said. Ain't that what y'all said? You can't like, eat if you're you going to starve watching another nigga eat. Exactly. So do your thing. Eat that Chipotle pussy. Eat that Chipotle pussy because that ain't got, got shit to do with me. So, uh, should a birthday sex be different? Yes. I feel like you're supposed to pull out all the good tricks. All the I feel like tricks. you should, but I feel like most people be having the same sex on their birthday that they have but any I'm other not day. Gonna, gonna lie, like I feel like if I'm, fucking, I think it's just too much, and I think it's too much pressure surrounded around it. Like, I just feel sex like should be sex. Like if you having good sex every day, what's the difference between yeah, birthday sex? But it is a difference. Like I'm not gonna lie, like there's a difference between like good sex and like great sex. Like if I'm fucking with somebody for years, every time we, like we'll rapper bay for example. Mm-hmm. We're gonna bring that name back. We had a lot of good sex. I'm not gonna lie. But it was like whenever it was like his birthday and my birthday, like we gonna turn the shit on a little extra. So what extra would y'all do? You know, maybe do it somewhere we ain't supposed to do it. You know what I'm saying? Do a little ride ride his dick. Cause I don't like riding dick. I'm a riding little dick. It's your birthday. So I know you want to ride out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to perform. <laughs> it's his birthday. I'm going to give you a little gift. I may suck on them balls a little bit longer than I usually do. You got to... like a little ball suck. You know what I'm saying? That's, I just feel like you just need to be a little extra. Just right. a little bit more with the performance. So if y'all and think... Do it like it's your do y'all day. perform... Don't lie either. Because I know I'm not the only one that does a little extra for people's birthday. If it's their birthday sex. I get very upset when it's my birthday and I don't get dick. Like, very upset. I feel like you're always supposed to have sex on your birthday. Right. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And y'all know, we love us some better help, child. We can't talk about better help enough. I feel like that's why I be, like, so chipper and happy lately. Like, I agree. I think even like I said before, it's definitely helped out our friendship as well, mm-hmm. you know? I feel like Kanisha is just, like, that's my counselor. She just understands me. Like, she already know what bullshit Lex P talk about today, but she gives me great advice. I feel like right um I don't know I just feel like I take charge of my days now and I'm controlling my own happiness so if you're a person that's struggling with like anything postpartum depression uh eating disorders whatever you have going on better help is going to find your issue target it and make sure you work through that yes and they're not gonna judge you so we also have a patient review it says i feel comfortable with cynthia she is very understanding i have loved all of our conversations and she is a caring genuine spirit this person was dealing with issues concerning relationships grief and self-esteem yes and this service is also available for clients worldwide because we know we got some listeners overseas now we do so if you want to use better help and you are not in the country it doesn't matter wherever you are we gonna get to you now so make sure you go to betterhelp.com backslash poor minds that's better h-e-l-p dot com backslash poor minds and the good thing about it is that you're gonna get a discount but also financial aid is available as well period so now we gonna get into the bob hey the bob the bob bow 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 I'm so I love this song. This is one of my close friends. I can't believe I forgot to do this as a bop of the week because he's been giving us solid bops for years. And I'm just tired of the way y'all, y'all, y'all don't appreciate my friend. friend. And I'm gonna beat y'all ass if y'all don't start streaming my friend's shit. He like they be streaming it though. They do be streaming it, but it needs to be streamed more. God damn it. Because it, it's just, it'd be a lot of fuck shit going on. And I don't like that. But anyway, so my bop of the week is by Wale featuring Chris Brown. It's called Angels. Hey, Wale. Shout out to Wale. That's my nigga. And I just feel like um it's a hit. You know, it's a hit with Hitmaker on that hoe. I told y'all hit how maker. I feel about hit, Hitmaker. 
It's young a bird. It's a difference between hit maker and young bird. We already it really ain't this. though, because sexy lady was about, and that was before he became hit maker. But sexy lady is not. The, hey, sexy lady. <laughs> it was nice to know you, but, but I gotta move on. on. That was a vibe. The harmony. <laughs> did that so yes, things we did yeah that. so Wale has a song featuring Chris Brown and it's just a vibe I feel like when you in the club this is the song that you pull out your phone and get with your girls or you you getting ready with your girls and you want to hit them angles like Wale knows how to speak to women he do his lyrics always lyricism I remember that top, song with him five. and Jeremiah. That was my shit back in the day. What was the name of that song? Which one? Um, it was on had, Ambition, the album. The mar- the marriage song. Oh no, that was with Usher. No, yeah. He had a song with Jeremiah and Rick Ross. Oh, um I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you that them hills <laughs> really compliment your friends. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the song though. Yes, I but yeah, that was about. Yeah, so yeah, Wale has been just giving us consistent hits for years, and I feel like he's just a little unappreciated. I feel like a lot of people be just like trying to count him out, but yeah. my friend is not done yet. Angles featuring Chris Brown. Y'all know when Chris Brown has a feature, he always gonna kill it. It's just a good song. It's a vibe. It's a feel good song. So, and speaking yeah. of Chris Brown, you know what I mean? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Speaking of Chris Brown, he has a song that's out right now. Well, it's actually Young Blue song, the guy that sings, um, they say Tom Hills, you can't live your life without me because you must do. Okay, you so. Sing, bitch, you a singing machine. Young guys. Blue, yes. Young Blue has a song with Chris Brown in two chains. It's called Baddies. Mm. Love it. Love that song. It's such a feel good song. I feel like it's the type of song that like you in a mirror, you doing your makeup, just like angles. you doing your hair, yes. you getting ready to go out, and you listening to that shit. You like, yeah, I'm that bitch. I'm the baddest. I'm not gonna lie, like Young Blue surprised me. I really thought he was gonna be a one hit wonder. Why? I don't know. Cause sometimes, like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not an A and R. I don't, you know. Sometimes I see it for people, and sometimes I don't. But have fooled me. I actually, <laughs> I was actually pleasantly surprised by his album. Like it was like he had a few bops on there. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like. He a good artist, you know. Like, I don't want to get my hopes up because I got my hopes up about Fetty Wap. <laughs> I did. I used to Bro, love Fetty Wap. You y'all, remember? Yes, dog. Because it was when I first met you. I want you <laughs> to be mine again, baby. Get Remy boy. Seventeen thirty. Yeah. Y'all, I changed my Y'all, phone so, to military time on my phone. So every time it was like 17.30, I'd be like, hey, what's up, hello? <laughs> <laughs> no. I used to love him. Bro, what is wrong with and you? And I get high with my baby. I be in the kitchen no. to a with my baby. Yeah. I remember when we first met and we went on that little trip to Lake Charles. We went to Golden Nugget. And you had us listening to Fetty Wap the whole time on the way there. You really was a Fetty Wap stand. I had it in my mind that whenever I got married... You was going to marry Fetty Wap? No, no. I was going to walk down the aisle to him singing, Remy Boys, 78. Remember that song? Bro, I remember because you made me listen to it. Not because I listened to it on my own. But that's what I'm saying. So back to the point that I'm <laughs> making. I really had like my high hopes out for Fetty Wap. So sometimes I sometimes I'm here miss. miss. I'm, and I miss with Fetty Wap. Well, Fetty, did. But I'm not going to lie. He had did, his run. Did you miss though? No, because Fetty Wap was that nigga at a was. point I just, in time. I thought that he Let's was gonna, not do that. No, Don't I'm not do doing that. What I'm saying is I thought he was going to be around for a little longer. That's what I mean. Like the longevity. Like I'm not saying that he was going to be like Drake, but how Ty Dolla Sign has been in the industry for a long time and he's still consistently cranking out hot features and hits. I thought that's what Fetty Wap was going to do. Yeah, Ty Dolla Sign got them by. Oh, Ty Dolla Sign is not to be fucked with in any way, shape, or form. But that's another topic. But I still love Fetty Wap. So whenever you're ready to make a comeback, I got a chair for you. We are ready to promote it on Poor Minds and discuss all the things Fetty Wap. No, we would love Fetty Wap to come on I'm here. Because like, I have some other scene. things I would like to talk to him about, too. All right. So, let's... <laughs> I mean, no, not like that. But bitch, you know what I'm talking about. 
I would like to chat with him. Okay, girl. I didn't say nothing. About his choices. All right. So we're going to get into the next segment of the show. It's called Pour Your Heart Out. If you want your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. Also, we are adding a segment to the show. Uh, what are we calling it? The testimonials. The segments. testimonials. So we want everybody who has gotten advice from us and either it worked, it did work, it didn't work. It's like a little, you know, we want our Yelp reviews, bitch. We need to know what the fuck's going on. So if you emailed us and we gave you advice on anything, email us again and title the subject uh, testimonials and let us know if the advice worked. Do we suck? Are we good? Just let us know so we can, you know, we're just going to do like one or two every week. Yes, mm-hmm. we are. Okay, so question number one. Drea and Lex, I love y'all. Poor Minds has been so therapeutic for me, so stay on y'all shit. I met this dude in jail two years ago on a dating site. We started talking. He was fine to me and a gentleman. But of course, I'm like, what the fuck can I do with a nigga that's in jail? I let it be known from the jump. I'm not one of those bitches that take care of a nigga <laughs> in jail, but we can see how this shit go. I let him know I would be doing me in the midst of it all. He had 3.5 years left at the time. Fast forward, five months in and i really started fucking with him he brought me a rollie and gave me 65k to make money not just to fuck off i knew about his combo when we first started talking he had money but never knew never knew exactly what type of bracket he was in anyway this man is crazy as fuck he's hacked into my phone and instagram and seeing shit he wouldn't have wanted to he's had niggas watching my house and just controlling all from the cell he's had he has about a year and a half left and now i'm not sure what i want to do he does shit for me and buys me shit but it just hit different because we're not spending actual time together he always reminds me he loves me and i I got love for him but i'm used to a nigga controlling ways and i know it'll be worse when he's out what would y'all do first of all i wouldn't ever talk well, bitch, to a now nigga that he jail. know you stay and shit i ain't gonna lie i'd be scared that this nigga gonna come whack me i'm not gonna lie because sixty five thousand dollars is a lot of fucking money so at this point he feels like he's invested in you he is in jail he feels like he done held you down he's gonna be expecting you to hold him down and i feel like if you're worried about it you need to be straight up and talk to him and either cut it off let your intentions be known because that's scary i ain't never dealt with a nigga i don't talk to hood niggas i don't talk to niggas in jail i don't do none of that shit so i (laughs) feel That's her specialty. But I feel like if anybody shows you their controlling ways... I don't talk to niggas in jail. If he's controlling in jail, imagine how it's going to be when he gets out. But your number one priority should be your safety and protecting yourself. So I feel like you need to do whatever is necessary to protect yourself and the people around you. But if you're already worried and he's not even out yet, you probably should cut this off. But... I don't think that's smart. That's what that's what I'm saying too because it's like cut it off but at the same time he might come looking for you. He ain't got to look for her. He know what she say. So what would you suggest she do? I would suggest she keep fucking with that nigga. Next question. <laughs> that that's it. Just keep fucking with him even though she's not happy. You accepted $65,000 from him. Yeah, that is true. You could have not accepted it. You could have been like, nah, I'm good. I don't want that money. Because um, stipulations come with that. Something come with everything. Yeah. So, definitely. um, you could have just been like, nah, I'm good. I'm straight. I don't need that money. I'm good. Hopefully but you the, didn't spend it. Give it back to him. But Shit. the fact that you took it and you've been fucking with him for all this time... And now he doing crazy ass shit. Well, bitch, duh, he crazy. He in jail. Most niggas in jail is crazy. They done did some crazy shit to get there. Right. So, it's just like, I don't know why you surprised. And I don't know why you thought this was going to be a cakewalk. So, I would just say. Yeah, free. Yeah, you know, I'm going to keep it 100 with you, sis. Um, he know where you live. Unless you plan on moving, I would keep fucking with that nigga. Oh, I'm dead. All right. Question number two. <laughs> I have been in a for relationship now. with my guy for around 10 years, and we now have several children together. He recently started speaking to his stepsister after losing the connection with her after a decade. She is a lesbian and has a girlfriend of 10 years also. He recently started to build a relationship with his sister, which is great, but I've been unsettled about him building a relationship with her girlfriend. It's been times where I've seen them FaceTime with each other at night, which drove me to look at their text messages. All messages have been innocent, but to me, it felt like as if it's crossing boundaries. I brought my concern to his attention and he's 
to his attention and he tells me I'm being controlling and insecure. Am I wrong for wanting him to stop having conversations with his sister's girlfriend? <laughs> Shut the hell up. <laughs> um, I do feel like that's a little weird. Like he's she's dating his sister. If you look, you obviously already um invaded his privacy by reading his text messages and you saw there was nothing there. It just sounds like you're being a little insecure, to be honest. To me, that's what it sounds like. Because you look through the text messages, not only is she a lesbian, but you say it wasn't nothing. You just I mean, I would let him know that it makes you feel a little uncomfortable. So maybe he needs to draw a line with her. But to want them to completely stop talking, I think that's a little extra. But maybe he could just be a little more respectful. I would let him know that it's bothering you, but I don't think you need to be insecure about it. I just feel like a lot of the time, and maybe this is just me, maybe partially being naive but i feel like until people give you a reason to be insecure about shit you really shouldn't trip about it because it just makes you look ridiculous sometimes that's what i'm saying like you've already made yourself look ridiculous you went through his phone that's an invasion of privacy like you already showed him that you don't trust him so i feel like have a conversation with him let him know like hey this kind of makes me feel uncomfortable can you just kind of chill out on it a little bit but to tell them to completely stop talking that's a little bit too far right. i think you're always you should always express how somebody makes you feel if you make me feel uncomfortable i'm gonna let you know no matter what but you need to also check your insecurities as well mm -hmm. so question number three Hey, ladies, I've been told that I last too long and it's an issue. This one woman I had sex with told me she won't do it again because I lasted 30 minutes and made her squirt. She said, and I quote, your dick's too good and I won't keep fucking with you. Am I in the wrong here? I thought women wanted good sex. Sir, You're first of all, lying. why the fuck you wrote us why you this wrote bullshit? Us a lie? Lying, lying ass nigga. <laughs> you niggas just volunteered that. And Ryan, I'm going to beat your ass because you know that nigga was lying. <laughs> Your dick too good. I can't fuck with you no more. <laughs> Leave me. Leave me, peasant. The dick is too fantastic. Yeah. I don't want any pots. I don't want any pots. It's too marvelous. I'm perplexed. What? Too much for me. First of all, stop lying to yourself. Sir? Because that did not happen. Am I in the wrong here? I thought no woman is saying that. I, did you really think that we was going to believe Bro, that? We're women. Fire, we going to keep fucking Because I'm not you. trying to be funny. 30 minutes is not too long for sex, first of all. And you made her squirt. Like, not Why everybody she just walking around here squirting. You could have said something believable like we was having sex for an hour and it's good to her, but that's too long. 30 minutes and squirt, that's normal, nigga. That's what you should be doing. And the saddest part is that you wrote us this shit and you anonymous, so you ain't even about to get no recognition. Next question. I did. I, I got some advice for you. <laughs> Stop lying, nigga. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, hey, Lex Andrea. Hope all is well. I'm a 26 year old black male film student and have been networking with this woman I go to school with for a while. She encompasses what I look for in a woman, and I am contemplating whether I should continue to play the long game and pursuing her or letting my feelings known and letting the chips fall where they may. Our last interaction was during a business meeting at a restaurant where we discussed future projects and all she's been caught up doing as a result of her busy schedule, pursuing a law degree and multiple jobs she offered to drive me home i shook her hand and bid her adieu <laughs> i was about to say these words long as fuck you smart as hell <laughs> as a result of her being so focused on her priorities and not being able to communicate consistently should i continue to keep things cordial and professional during our platonic friendship or drop hints be transparent that i'm interested in her beyond that I think that you should drop your hands. Yeah, I do too. I feel Why like... not? Drop your hands and if she ready for that, drop that dick off. All right. You took shit too far real fucking quick. Let her know. That I said if she ready for that. Because you won't know once you start dropping the hands. I feel like sometimes certain shit be like once in a lifetime opportunities. If you like her and you feel like you really feel like y'all vibe and y'all could have something more than a friendship. Then do it like then... a happy day, baby. <laughs> It been a long ass episode, y'all. I'm ready to get okay. Wait, wait, wait. But let me question. also say this: I feel like you should drop the hints to her, and or maybe just be open and tell her. But respect whatever she says. If she says no, you need to be okay with that and still be able to continue a professional relationship with her. My thing is, is I hate that 
sometimes like if I've worked with a man in the past and he told me that he liked me and I let him know I wasn't interested, it ruined our professional relationship. So you need to understand that whatever answer that she gives you, you need to be okay with continuing the professional relationship. Mm -hmm. You know? I agree with that. So make sure you're ready for whatever answer she gives you. But I think yeah. you should definitely because let her know. Because you're still going to have to be professional you either way. You still have to be professional. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to bid her adieu. Bid her adieu. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I never have said that in bid, a day in my life. What? Bid her adieu? You ain't never said that. Yes, either. I have. Bitch, I never bitch, heard I, you say adieu. I have bidded you adieu bitch, you so know, many motherfucking uh, times, ho. Bitch, you, you didn't even know how to spell adieu. Bro, so you just, I bid you adieu. Yesterday. This talk would have texted me talking about I bid you adieu and put A D U. Bitch, I have bid you adieu before. You No, you haven't. Me. I bid you adieu yet last night. When? I said, Where I, was we last I night? I said, all right, partner, I bid you adieu. I'll see you tomorrow. I didn't even see you yesterday. Yes, we did when we got our hair done, stupid oh. bitch. Mm -hmm. That's how I know you don't remember. See, hoes just be lying. I just be forgetting about our encounters. I see you too often. It's just easy to forget. Okay, you ready? You said. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. God damn. Go ahead. Go ahead, bitch. Now, who are you? I'm with. I'm with Kelly are. Price. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you gotta go first because you with me. You said. You'd be here by now. Instead, <laughs> you took your time. You didn't think to call me, boy. Uh, here I sit, trying not to cry, asking myself why you do this to me, oh baby. Since you're not around for me to tell you, baby, face to face. Mm -hmm. I, well, I gotta be both people. Come on, man. Keep going. I'm writing you this letter, and this is what I have to say. You. All I really wanted was some more of your time. Instead, you told me lies when someone else was on your mind. What'd you do to me? Why'd you do it? Can't take what you did to me. What? I, what's the word? You keep scrolling, man. You keep fucking scrolling. This why I will ever let you lead, bitch. You keep motherfucking... Go ahead. Sing your part because you're looking for something, bitch. What you looking for? You know, ruin the goddamn doing. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Oh, Y'all see? This is the heartbreak hotel. You got mm. the heartbreak I don't know that part. hotel. This is the what heartbreak. Oh, you what? You don't want to add me? Oh, let me do that, that part. Tell. This, this is, is the heartbreak hotel. This is the heartbreak oh, I thought that's what I was doing mm. all I really <laughs> wanted was some of your time is that you told me lies when someone else was on your mind what you do to me why'd you do it look what you did to me that was good okay, okay. let me just close let me just really close it out I wanted your love <laughs> let me just close it out I got one more song I want to sing all I sing was time Okay. But you made me cry. I just wanted to sing this because um I was it's with Kelly my, Price for me. That lady was like, <clears throat> I just wanted to sing this because I was with my <laughs> I just wanted to sing I just wanted to sing Kelly this. Kelly did that. Because I was with my friends last Let's weekend. Up, I'm sorry. And this is um dedicated to my friends. And I just yeah, shout out to y'all. <clears throat> I hate it here. Hello, my friend, we meet again. It's been a while, where should we be, girl? Feels like forever. Within my heart, a memory of perfect love that you gave to me. Oh, I remember. Cause when you are with me, I'm free. I'm careless, I believe, above all the others, well, for life, this brings tears 
to my eyes, my sacrifice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, that's how I used to sing Amen. back in the day. Girl. Now, I ain't gonna lie, I used to like that song. I know you did. That was a good song. Because you know when they get in their bag, they swear, and then it, be, it always be the man in the background like this. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, boy, all the other, all the way off a lie. This brings <laughs> <in. laughs> <laughs> That's what it was supposed to give. Yes, yes. I just lived out my dream. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Bye. We about to do it like it's my B day, baby. <laughs> that was a moment. A moment in time. Ooh, that glue was tight. <laughs> Try out the bar. Let me help me down. I'm dead. Mm mm. Baby. Like it's my beat, baby. Baby.